Hey guys, Aaron again. I am in the garage, this time with my wife's 2017 BMW X4 M40i. And I'm going to be installing a tow hitch on her car, mostly out of selfish reasons. I need a way to pull my small trailer to the track so that I can track it. She agreed to let me install this in exchange for paying for it, installing it, buying her other miscellaneous gifts, etc. So I picked up the Kurt hitch off of Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description in case you want to do the same with your car. Here's the hitch. This is how it gets shipped to you. Maximum trailer weight of 3,500 pounds, a tongue weight of 350 pounds, and supposedly there's some weight distribution system that can be added to increase it up to 400 pounds, uh, 4,000 pounds, and 400 pound tongue weight. All the hardware you needed is included here. And this one is the Kurt 13316 model. And it comes with some printed instructions. So here's a picture of the underbody panel that you're gonna remove, and you will need to trim a part of it so that the hitch will fit there. And you're gonna need a plastic rivet gun. It comes with the rivets, but not the gun to put a part back on. So let's start with the instructions. The first thing is to remove that underbody panel that you're going to end up trimming. It says there are 11 fasteners on most models and some just have nine. I think you can do this whole installation with the car on the ground, but I'm going to use my quick jack since I have it just to give myself a little more clearance under there to work. The car here, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five eight millimeter screws we're gonna have to remove. And then there are one, two, three, four, 10 millimeter nuts to take off. Some rocks are falling out. All right, after those are off, you can wiggle this thing loose. And it will come out. All right, next, if you come around by the wheel and look underneath here, see through all this dirt that there are two eight millimeters here to remove. And then there's one plastic rivet. Uh, your model may or may not have this. So you can either take a little punch and punch out the center piece, or you can drill it out. And then coming around the side, you'll see that there's one more eight millimeter right there. Just note that this one is shorter and has a bigger washer, so it's different than the other ones you removed. All right, like I thought, that didn't work very well, so now I have a 1 16th inch drill bit. All right, need one just a little bit bigger. All right, now I have an eighth inch drill bit. There we go, I think that pushed it through. And now we can pull that rivet out. So do the same thing on the other side of the car. All right, now if you look under the wheel well, you'll see that there are more of these rivets. There are seven of them all the way around here. The instructions say to remove all seven, but I think if you remove the one that's almost straight above and then just down to the back of the car that that is gonna be enough. So same procedure here. I'm just gonna drill those out on both sides. So even after you drill the rivets out, they can be pretty hard to get out. But if you have one of these pry tools that is made for it, it will make your life so much easier. You just push it all the way in and they pop right out. So I'll put a link to a set of these. They're really cheap and will save you a ton of time. The reason we removed those rivets was because this is a trim piece here that we need to pull back. So with those loose, we should be able to pull this out now. Let me show you. They are just pressed in with these clips. So if you just remove the first two clips and just work it out slowly and gently so you don't break anything, that they will pop off. And just one more clip. All right, so you can see down in here, this one is a white clip that goes into that hole. So once you remove those three, there are these two eight millimeters that you can access and remove those. And repeat on the other side. All right, the next step is we are going to remove the tail lights. So to do that, this piece here is just a uh, plastic 
cover. So I'm gonna take my pry tool and find a good corner and just pry it away. And then you just pull it straight towards the middle of the vehicle. Take your time with it. Here we go, and pull it off. So it just has clips here that hold it on. And now we have exposed our two nuts that we're gonna remove, they're 10 millimeter. All right, now make sure you don't lose these by dropping them down there. So I'll just take them off the rest of the way by hand. Now we should be able to pull this straight back towards the rear of the car and they will come out if they can be stubborn if you have an older vehicle and uh, there's a lot of dirt and grime holding them on but there is a electrical connector back here just gonna squeeze on this big release tab up top and pull this out and it'll slide out like this all right same thing to remove this one over here after you have the tail lights off, there is one more eight millimeter under each one. So remove those two. So it looks tricky on this car. I'm gonna have to remove this reflector because there is a bolt behind it. So I'm going to get a thin pry tool and carefully work my way in here because these things are fragile. I don't wanna break it. All right, so this one was a tough one. Uh, and it was really hard to film at the same time I was doing it. So let me show you what I did. Uh, I have this pry tool, which has these little grooves in it, which uh, the first time I've, it's come in super handy. So I went in from the top and I pushed it all the way in, in, uh, in the middle of this reflector. And I pushed it in far enough for this first one to grab it here. And as it grabbed it, I pulled it out and it came out a little bit. And then I put it in and I slid it all the way to the edge and caught it and pulled that a little bit. Went all the way to this edge, pulled it, caught it, and then went in with the corner here. And now it is ready to come out. So these are the clips you're removing. So that's the first one that I got out. And then, uh, so I guess it fits in that in the corner and then these two brackets snap in so that's snapped in there and that one is snapped in in the middle so that's how it fits in and that's how I got it out and once you get it out you have one more eight millimeter under there to remove all right it is time to remove the bumper cover and you're going to start on the edge and start slowly pulling it back and prying it off towards the middle of the car. Now this part is has been really hard. Um, essentially I just had to pull it really hard and it popped out and snapped and sounded like it was going to break, but it did not break. All right, let me try to show you. So there's five on each side. All right, after you get those all popped out on this car, you have to pull this piece up over this little lip and uh, it slides into this little thing here. And then there are two more little tabs that I press down with a tool so that this will slide over it. And the same here, just use a little pressure to press them down and you'll hear them snap so just press that down while you're pulling this back and it'll release
Now once those are released, you should be able to pull this whole thing off with my lovely assistant. in the middle, two tabs to press in to release. So here's the other end of the connector. Next step is to remove this big black piece and then there is a second identical one over here. There are four 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four on each of them and there is couple electrical connectors here so we want to disconnect them so there are two tabs one is in the back and it's really hard to reach and for this connector once we remove this piece on the back uh, from the back of it you'll be able to push these two things out that are holding this wire in Next, we're gonna remove the entire bumper beam here. And to do that, there are four nuts to remove, one on the top and one on the bottom of each side. Turns out we need a deep 18 millimeter socket to get over the threads. Finally to the hitch, go ahead and put the hitch on. And put the bumper bar back on. And use our same nuts to tighten it back down. Now we need to take a torque wrench and torque it to 86 foot-pounds. There we go. All right, we are going to take our plastic piece that we removed and we are going to not reinstall it yet, but line it up with our studs. Put it back in place there. Uh, so I guess on some models, the hitch actually hits and interferes with this and you have to trim some of the bottom here uh, to make it not come in contact with the hitch. But on the X4 M40i at least, it does not have any clearance problems. So go ahead and reinstall both sides of this plastic. When you put the hitch on, make sure you pull this out of the top of it so that the head of this is not pinched down in there or else you will not be able to get it back out to put it up here. Ask me how I know that. But in having to take this piece back off in order to get my wiring correct, I did discover on this vehicle, you do not need to remove these two plastic panels, it appears, because there's plenty of room to do everything and get the hitch in here without having to modify these. All right, make sure you reconnect the wiring and put this wiring back in place. And now we can put the bumper cover back on. Now we can take the new rivets supplied with the kit and a rivet gun and reinstall these rivets. So they will go in this way. And then what the rivet gun will do is pull this down some and cut this piece off so it will lock it into place. All right, the other rivet gun that I bought it had a maximum of 3 16 inch, I guess, and that was not quite big enough for this to fit in. So I got this from Harbor Freight this morning, and this one fits these. So you just take the rivets that are supplied, put that long end into the gun like that, push the rivet up into the hole, and, and squeeze, and it should pull the rivet tight and cut the end off for you. So you are left with this. 
Okay, now for the cutting part, we are gonna hold this bottom piece up so that we can see where we need to cut for our hitch. So if we line it up in the middle, I'm just gonna mark on the inside of this thing where we're gonna need to cut so that we will have clearance around this. And so these are our lines that I marked. We're just gonna cut straight all the way back. And when it's complete, it should look like this. It's very unobtrusive. Man, it was a hot one today, but we got it done. It wasn't too bad of a job. It will definitely take you two to three hours. It took me at least three hours, but I was filming the whole time, so that adds a lot of time. Hopefully this helped you though. If it did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and you will see more BMW content coming up.